Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, for this video, I'm going to be reacting to horrifying things that happen on horror movie sets. Um, actually, yesterday I was going to upload three videos, um, but two of them got blocked because one of them was Nicki Minaj's performance on the MTV VMAs, and the second one was Jack Harlow's performance at the MTV VMAs. But um, I guess some people, like, if you get a copyright strike or a copyright claim on youtube um it just sometimes they don't it's not it's not visible in other countries but some people when they do a copyright claim then they just block the whole video so that's what happened yesterday they blocked both of those videos so you guys only got one video yesterday so um i feel kind of bad so i'm gonna do an extra video today and i really hate horror movies like if you know me i don't watch horror movies like that uh, so I don't know if this is going to be scary or what actually happened on the horror movie sets. So we're going to see. And yeah, I've hated horror movies since I was like three years old because, um, one time me and my family, we went to this Filipino place because my mom's Filipino. So we went to this Filipino place and we rented a movie, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know if my mom knew that the movie was scary but we were watching it at night and it had this like scary Filipino witch and all I remember, I was like three years old, all I remember from that movie was like the Filipino witch following this girl and then she bit her shoulder and her shoulder was bleeding and yeah, that's all I remember. So ever since then, I hated horror movies because I have an overactive imagination. So uh, yeah, even in Korea, I live alone. So uh, I'm not trying to watch scary movies and then have an overreact overactive imagination when i get home but yeah we'll see what this is and also it's raining in seoul it's always raining these days and that's why it's kind of dim and gloomy so yeah let's see what this video is about i hope it's not too scary because i hate scary things but yeah let's start it oh also before i start the video please subscribe and let me know what else i should react to in the comments below thanks legitimately scary but in some cases, the events that took place on the sets of certain horror movies were more terrifying than the movies themselves. A number of horrifying incidents have taken place on the sets of some of the most successful- Oh, I remember. It's not a horror movie, but I heard that the movie Three Guys and a Baby, there was like a ghost on the set or something. Something like that. ...horror movies of all time, before, during, or shortly after filming. Whether these incidents were fatal accidents, cruel twists of fate, or some sort of evil curse, still remains debatable. Perhaps a good place to start would be the Amityville Horror House, whose events may start to seem even scarier when you learn that horrors also took place on the sets for both the 1979 movie and the 2005 remake. The first Amityville movie starred James Brolin, who wasn't originally eager to take on the role, but eventually he accepted it because of something strange that happened. While reading the script one morning and getting to a scary section of the story, a pair of the actor's pants suddenly fell off a hanger, causing him to literally jump out of his chair in fright. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> I hope reacting to this video nothing happens to me because, um, I live alone and I'm supposed to be meeting my friends later, so if I don't show up, then they'll know something's wrong. <laughs> James, of course, saw this as a sign that he needed to take the role, and the rest was history. Fast forward to the 2005 remake with Ryan Reynolds. Wait, if something scary happened while you're reading the script, why why would you want to continue? Like, if it was me, I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm dropping out. Like, pants falling, but when I start filming the movie, like, my legs gonna be falling. No, I'm, I'm out. No, that's, I would not continue after that. Reynolds taking on the part that was originally played by James Brolin. During filming, Ryan Reynolds, along with other cast members, claimed that every morning at exactly 3.15 a.m., they would wake up. The reason why that's terrifying is because 3.15 a.m. was the exact time that Ronald DeFeo murdered his entire family in the house. And it becomes a whole lot more creepy. At one point during filming, there was also an actual dead body that washed up near the filming set in the boathouse in the backyard of the house. Actors and crew members always suspected that there was an otherworldly presence during the filming of the movie. Whether they were right or just overly paranoid, who knows. The 2012 film The Possession is an unconventional horror movie that involves rabbis, Judaism, and a cursed Jewish relic called Dybbuk Box that attaches itself to a young girl. A Dybbuk Box is a wine cabinet claimed to be haunted by a Dybbuk, which is a malevolent wandering spirit that enters and possesses the body of a living person until exorcised. 
What happened on the set of The Possession left even the star of the movie Jeffrey Dean Morgan feeling very uneasy and he already had a lot of experience acting in horror movies and shows under his belt. Some of the seemingly supernatural things that happened included lights exploding for no apparent reason as well as chilly breezes wafting through closed sets for no particular reason. But the scariest incident occurred when the storage facility where all the movie props were being held caught fire and burned to the ground. A team of investigators concluded that the fire was not started from an electrical fault or arson, but the actual cause for the fire couldn't be determined. The Dybbuk box used in the movie, which played an important role in the movie, was destroyed in the fire and the cast and crew later refused to allow the movie's producers to replace the Dybbuk box for fear that it was cursed. The Conjuring is- Wait, but um, who, where did they get the box from and who made it? Was it, did they buy it for the movie or did someone make it for the movie? I don't know, but um, yeah, like when stuff like that when stuff like that happens, I will be the first one to leave. Uh, the next movie, The Country, I've actually seen this movie, and I actually watched it alone, believe it or not, at home in the dark um, when it came out around the time it came out. Uh, but I feel like I wasn't that scared. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I was that scared watching The Country, surprisingly. It's a movie that's supposed to be based on the true story of the Perrin family, who claim to be tormented by supernatural- How come every time they show old pictures, they're like scarier than the like actual movie? Like, can they um, upgrade these pictures to make them less scary? Even like, um, like those cop shows, like when people draw pictures of the suspect, like they're looking for the person, those pictures are scary. Like, can they make it better? Natural entities in the Rhode Island home in the 70s. While several of the family members spent time on the set during filming, the mother refused to go anywhere near it as she was convinced that several unexplained events that plagued the filming of this movie on set were proof that the spirits hadn't finished with them yet. For instance, when members of the parent family were visiting, a furious gust of wind suddenly rose and seemed to swirl around them. However, nobody could see any movement in any of the trees just opposite them, movement you'd expect to see from any normal gust of wind. Just a couple days later, the hotel that the actors and movie crew were staying in caught fire and everyone had to be evacuated. And it doesn't end there. James Wan, the movie's director, recalls working late in his office one evening when his dog started growling at something. He would get up to investigate, but he couldn't find anything that would be antagonizing the dog. However, the dog had his sights on something across the room. It seemed he had focused on an unseen entity mm -mm. in one corner of the room. James took a break from working after this, having been legitimately freaked out. Vera Farmiga, who played the role of a paranormal investigator in the film, refused oh to take gosh. the script home with her, as she said it made her feel uneasy. She also couldn't read it at night because she became paralyzed by fear whenever she tried. After a phone call discussion with James Wan, Vera opened her laptop screen, and there were three digital claw marks from the upper right diagonal to the lower left. This wasn't the last time it happened, mm -hmm. though. Her next experience came a few months later, literally on the day that she completed work on The Conjuring. She returned home to upstate New York, and when she woke up the next day, she discovered what she describes as three claw mark bruises across her thigh. In 1983, mm -mm. a movie based on the Twilight Zone series was released. During filming, actor Vic Morrow was killed on the set. Deaths on movie sets have happened many times. But what makes this extra disturbing is the fact that Morrow appeared to predict his demise just a year earlier. A year before filming of the Twilight Zone movie began, Vic took out a $5 million life insurance policy on himself, explaining to friends and family members that he had a premonition something bad was going to happen to him on an upcoming movie. He had seen it in a dream he had. Unfortunately, his premonition came true, because while filming a scene involving a helicopter for the Twilight Zone, the helicopter crashed and decapitated him. Two Dang. child actors were also killed in the accident, which prompted a lengthy investigation and court case. It was later revealed in court that the movie's concept artist unintentionally drew an identical image in his sketches to what actually happened, a burned out helicopter in the middle of a river essentially foreshadowing the accident. The accident led to civil and criminal action against the filmmakers, which lasted nearly a decade. One of the children's fathers testified that he heard John Landis, the director, instructing the helicopter to fly lower. All four parents testified that they were never told that there would be helicopters or explosives on set, and they had been assured that there would be no danger, only a lot of noise. 
John Landis and four other crew members would be found not guilty on the three charges of manslaughter, having been the first time a director was charged due to a fatality on a film set. The 1976 film The Omen is another horror classic following the tale of a young boy named Damien Thorne, who was replaced at birth by his father, unbeknownst to his wife, after their biological child died shortly after birth. As a series of mysterious events and violent deaths occur around the family and Damien enters childhood, Dang, Ryan. they come to learn to catch in fact it. the Antichrist. The film almost wasn't going to be completed due to an alleged curse that surrounded filming of the movie. So many horrible things happened on the set of The Omen that it can be comparable to the amount of bad things to happen in the movie. The tragedies began with the son of the lead actor Gregory Peck taking his own life as soon as filming began. The next incident was when a crew member suffered major injuries after getting into a car accident while driving to the set, but the tragedies didn't stop there. The scriptwriter's airplane was struck by lightning en route to the film's location, and if that weren't enough, an airplane in which Gregory Peck and the movie's executive producer were traveling in was also struck by lightning in a separate incident. Harvey Bernhard, the producer, was on location in Rome when he was almost hit by a bolt of lightning himself. And believe it or not, the horrible luck involving airplanes Dang. continued. And All those lightning worse. strikes. One day, the crew had decided to use a private airplane to get from one film location to the other. However, just after the plane took off with a number of the crew on board, something went wrong and the plane went down, crashing into a road and hitting a car, which then crashed at a high speed into another. Okay, so all these people in the plane getting struck by lightning, they need to stop taking planes. Vehicle. All 11 people involved in the accident were killed. Another Dang. tragic death associated with the movie set was that of Liz Moore. John Richardson, the Omen special effects expert, was driving through the Netherlands with Liz Moore when they were involved in a terrible car accident. Richardson escaped with very minor injuries, but Moore's head was completely severed when a tire smashed into their vehicle. This incident was eerily reminiscent of a scene in The Omen in which the character Keith Jennings, investigating Damien's supernatural origins, is decapitated by a sheet of glass that comes loose from a vehicle on a construction site. Richardson later reported that just before the crash, he passed a road sign that read Omen 66.6 kilometers. Make of that what you will, but there's no denying that it's not too far off to speculate that the production of the Omen may have been cursed. That or it was all just an outrageous coincidence. All that can be said for sure is that The Omen is a very iconic movie, and the chilling tales that surround its production have only helped to cement that legacy. Okay, um, yeah, this is why I don't watch scary movies, because they traumatized me as a kid, and I don't want things following me, I don't want to get struck by lightning, I don't want to be caught in a fire, um, yeah, uh, I'm good, I'm... I watch horror movies from time to time, but I don't watch them as much as other people. But anyway, uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe. Let me know what else I should react to. If you want to see my experiences in Korea, you can check out my first channel, Sexy Beat. And if you want to see what I do outside of YouTube, you can check out my Instagram and my TikTok. Both are Sexy Beat. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.